afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. So our topic was housing and uh, home ownership. Uh, wonderful dialogue. I mean, our group we have asked for better members. Um, wonderful, creative uh, dialogue in place. Uh, just the multitude of things came out. Uh, as far as uh, one of the specific, specific topics to uh, housing was uh, gentrification that came up. That um, Dean came up. Uh, what do we do? Who do we ask? Um, where do we go? With all the knowledge in that room, uh, we were able to converse and, you know, like, you know, there's this association, or there's this nonprofit, etc. cetera. Um, so we were able to gather um, some of that, but in addition to that, um, we also talked about the communication piece. How do we get the word out to neighborhoods where this is going to happen or on the verge of happening? Um, what, what do we do here? And so, in the um, day and a half, or a couple of hours, I should say, um, we came up with um, that we need to start, for example, in San Antonio with our elected officials and staff. We need to organize ourselves uh, to be able to attend meetings. And sometimes we may not want to attend those meetings because they think the scene has nothing's happening. But we need to attend, we need to be a presence in those rooms when things are taking place. Um, we also um, had uh, the information, again, messaging. How are we going to inform the residents of what's going on? Uh, different ways, but for us Latinos, it's face to face usually, right? Going uh, door to door or like this, having those conversations, getting the word out. Uh, we also talked about affordable housing, how San Antonio doesn't talk about this topic fairly, and how it doesn't seem to be an importance to the city. So again, how is our presence going to be there? How are we going to show the city um, the message that we need this, our families need this? So again, it's going back to the organi organizing and uh, how do we get there? How, how, how are we going to, as you say, one, to get to the next level? We uh, also talked about, I mean, many things, but as far as policies, which policy, you know, which one are we going to go and work on that they need some fixing or a new policy? And if we, you know, we agree that we need to do a needs assessment kind of, you know, we need to go ask. We need to ask the neighborhood, we need to ask people, um, what, what is it that, um, that needs to take place? We can't assume or we can't um, just think just because we have an idea that it's good for all people. So we need to actively get into our neighborhood. I mean, it all boils down to grassroots, going down and speaking to people face to face. We um, also um, had conversations again on communication, um, how we can also perhaps through that communication get involved with associations as well, uh, different nonprofits, etc. Uh, to get the word out. Um, that's, that seems to be a problem in housing and other things, that our communication is just not right here. And so we need to try different avenues. Uh, because lots of things are passing, for example, uh, PDHDA, or yes, uh, we, things are like kind of appear to be kind of secret. Who knows what's going on, and, and maybe the agenda is getting the day before, or whatnot, and not really having enough time 
to know what questions to ask, etc. So um, there was a lot of great, as I mentioned, conversation and the bottom line that we as a group came up to was um, it also is going to take voting for us to, you know, to get out there and have the people vote and inform them why it's important to vote and also give them information that perhaps may not be familiar to them, but explain it to them because all of the housing, the education, health boils down to the vote. So um, that's what we did. I mean, we have a lot of more information, of course, on up here that um, you know, hopefully it's going to be shared, right? So that's what we get. Uh, actually, what would y'all prefer? All four first, and then yeah. and you do an eight on it. Uh, how I got here. 
But I also remember why I continue to be here. And as I was doing that thinking, um, I got a picture of my niece. And this is my this is my grandniece. I don't have grandchildren, I have grandnieces. And I remember that uh, she will be standing here because the change that we are fighting for and working for and struggling for um, it is going to be so that they can say they're standing on our backs, right? And, and I remember her. And I got her picture, reminded me what day today is, and, um, and it gave me energy. But it also connects to our familias. Ella, as we speak right now, benefits from going to Head Start, participating in, in programs that people fought for, right, for us to have. And when you see her interact, you see the impact that early education, very early education, has on our children. So thank you, Juan, for letting me share that personal part of me during the facilitation. Um, we uh, looked at key issues, and as we were looking at key issues, Can you see that well? I'm not an Apple user, so I can make that very big. Uh, we, we talked about um, all these contributors to, um, to health outcomes, right? And we looked at what these contributors, what impact they have on our health. Uh, and so we use, most of the time when we talk, and you see my hand moving, most of the time when we talk about policy, we talk, we tend to talk about health behaviors. We tend to talk about uh, body parts. Somehow, if you have more food, if you eat healthy, you'll, you know, you live longer. If you go out and exercise, you know, you'll eat healthier when, you know, in fact, some of the families that we talk to don't have sidewalks in their communities to go and walk. Um, so all that, but I put this up here just to share with you that as we were having our discussions, we focus um, our um, dialogue around the issue of social and economic factors and the, how the social and economic factors affect the health and well-being, the economic mobility of our families. So that was. Uh, part of the framework. And those of you that participated in the dialogue can please feel free to add. So the the key issues that came up that Dr. Padilla laid out for us yesterday around health have to do with um, the need to focus on uh, on planting pregnancy. That's a key issue in our community. The um, health insurance, access to uh, healthcare as well, chronic illness, diabetes, HIV, homicide, all those health issues um, were, were presented by Dr. Padilla in, uh, in our uh, meeting yesterday. Um, the, uh, the other piece that she talked about was the, the um, I hope I'm going to give her due credit here. Um, this whole thing of, we talk about babies, Latino babies are being born so healthy, right? So somehow they're going to be okay. Uh, but we often forget uh, that as we are aging and the, the chronic illnesses of our um, aging population kind of get forgotten about. Um, so those were just in a very high level summary. In terms of policy recommendations, we came up with three, and the first one was, of course, comprehensive, comprehensive health insurance, um, both in terms of we, we don't just need insurance, we need access to services. Uh, there were lots of sub, um, subheadings uh, below that. The other piece that we talked about um, is living wages. Right? So one of the one of the overarching or aha moments or whatever you want to call it that, that we uh, came up with is that health is affected by everything around us, right? Our housing, um, our, our work, um, 
the, whether we're employed, how much we're earning, our education, so all those things affect our health and well-being. So that's what, that's how uh, living wage came up in a discussion about health. Then the third one was around education. And education at all kinds of levels, right? So education, um, K to, uh, pre-K to uh, third grade, um, all the way up to college. So that's like the traditional type of education that we tend to talk about. But also um, other types of education where uh, we are developing the workforce, social workers, doctors, nurses that are out there to be as knowledgeable as uh, um, the policy, uh, amazing folks like Eva are about policy and how money works in politics because we don't often do that. Um, the other type of education that we talked about was educating just communities. How many of our communities really know uh, the issues that we're talking about right now? Right? No. So what are we doing uh, to, uh, it's almost like infiltrate and take uh, take the information to the deepest deepest roots of our community that is in our family. So those were like the three main policy um, pieces. The, the other thing that uh, when we were talking about uh, capacity building, what capacity do we have, we engage in a dialogue about what are our assets. Right. What groups are out there pushing Latino centric, Latino focused policy? So we came up with several um, categories. Because um, uh, we're not, it's not like we're starting from ground zero. There are a lot of people out there, lots of groups that, that can help us move this along. So we came up with a list of that. Um, and in, in terms of this is where I told the group, you know what? Yeah, I feel you know. Yeah, I make that out. Right? Um, because we, we, there was a, a part that we needed to talk related to short term, mid term, and long term strategies. Right? So we, the, what we uh, focused on that was that there has to be different strategies. It can't, and, and I heard it say here, it can't just be all of us have to go out and vote. Right? It can't just be all of us have to go and talk to legislators, or all of us. It's it's going to take all of those strategies. There were grandmas in the in the group, and the strategies. Where are my grandmas? Yeah. Um, the strategies that they're using to mobilize their, their community is as equally important as a vote that we can get somebody to go and take. Right? That's very important. So um, that's that's how we frame that, uh, that discussion in terms of uh, strategies. The, the other thing, I don't know if it was so much for uh, the, the group, but it was an aha for me, right? We were looking at what policies um, impede our progress, what policies that keep us from economic mobility or the economic mobility of our families, and what policies um, enable us uh, to move forward. And as I was looking at that, uh, I was thinking, oh my God, so which one do we target first? Right? Do we focus our energies in like these policies that are so detrimental to our community? Do we focus on these that are helping? Um, and of course, it takes, you know, we, we have to focus on both. But then, Juan, mi querido Juan, he kind of threw water on me uh, when he said, I'm throwing you under the bus, Juan. But, you know, it's okay. You can do it real time. You know, he put something for it to, the, to the group about, you know, we keep going to the well knowing there's no water there. Did I capture that right? Right? So, it, 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 to me, back to your presentation from yesterday about um, just how the, the budget and the funding that's allocated. So, what is it that we need to do incorporating our strategies, right? 
to pull at that to ensure that yes we're working with community at all levels we're doing education we're fighting for uh, equal access to health care and so on and so forth and yet that well uh, needs a strategy from all of us um, I believe <coughs> That's uh, about as far as I'm going to go with the, the discussion. Anybody else from that group want to add anything? I'll be, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, I was in the group, so I'm playing another role, okay? Um, you better not come in for the bus. Uh, Are you down here with me? I, I just want to add to the idea of the wealth, okay? And, and nobody wants to talk about it, but that's taxes and the tax, tax code. You know, Eva said, you know, I know you're focused in on who's paying the taxes disproportionately more. Okay? You all saw that graph. And, and the majority, a large portion of that population in Texas is our familias who are in that category, particularly 200% 200, 200% with those with uh, low income and low poverty. Okay? And if we have a, a, a philosophy in this state, an ideology that you can keep the budget continuously below what's even needed for basic state needs, right? So why aren't we advocating for restructuring the Texas tax code? Now, immediately, the response even in our group, I think, was, how did you know no more taxes? Who said more taxes? Do you think that our people know what they're paying in taxes right now compared to others in our population? Exactly. So and that's all I was trying to point out is that, so when you think about, I'm not saying it's, none of these strategies are important, but in the context of things, even in our group, just in healthy human services, mental health wants more money, CPS wants more money, uh, uh, Medicare expansion, Medicaid expansion wants more money, caregivers want more money, and not a single one, maybe one will be lucky if the legislator plays their little budget games and give a little bit to caregivers, okay? Like for getting mental health, or this past year, mental health did okay? So that, so that's just in that part. What about the group in education that wants equitable funding and needs, we really need another three billion? Or the group in housing, or the group in labor employment? So I'm just posing the question to you. You know, if we're all going to do well, and spending a lot of energy, and particularly if they have what they call a fiscal note to it, you know, our fiscal material. So in some ways, we're in conflict even across these issues. And so, by the health and human services, so that's why I'm about the taxes. All right, thank you. That's it.